I, I find it amazing uh, when, you, when and Tim will say this, when you work in a media context, you might be dealing with, say, 20 advertising campaigns at any given time. So maybe 20 advertising campaigns a month. Now, I don't think there's anyone who actually works in the marketing industry as a consultant or advisor that is at the coalface of 20 marketing campaigns every month. One observation that, that I have made, particularly over the last 18 months, is the very clear lack of measurable goals whenever I speak to a client and they say, I'd like to run some advertising with you. And I say, what are your goals? They say, uh, brand exposure, brand awareness, uh, you know, public exposure, all these other things. And then they'll say, uh, maybe web traffic. Then they might say cost per click, if, you know, if, they're, if they're getting down that, down that track. But, uh, but I'm, I, I seem to, they seem to, I seem to not find it, maybe one in 10 will have a strategy for converging, convert, what's the expression? Converting that interest into, say, a real living, breathing member of their community or customer. Um, I, might, I might throw that to, to, to Mick as a hint of the sort of thing. I mean, you know, you're going to mention my name, and then you're going to Heather or to me. No, 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 it's me, Heather, from you and Noir. No, 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 no. Tim must speak. Uh, Tim must speak. I've got no idea. Tim, help me out. Tim. He's sitting there going. So, who might be the question? Measurables. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, it's strange. Is there an expectation that digital marketing is the accountable medium and at the same time no one is actually exercising the beauty of that medium, i.e. its accountability? I think the problem is a lot of advertising might not happen if people start to... I was saying a, might, a lot of the problem might be that the advertising might not happen if, um, if people were asked for the numbers in the first place because you know, the, the justification often is simply branding. It's one of those things where just because you can measure it, should you? Um, you know, I, I think online is almost the worst for that, where you can get so many different numbers and stats, and it's almost meaningless. You know, does it matter whether you've got 7,000 Twitter followers and 1,000 people on your Facebook group if the next stage doesn't follow? Um, so I think the market director who comes to you and says, actually, here's the brief, I would like you to get me 1,000 Facebook followers by next week, I'm not sure that actually takes things any further just because there is a metric in place. But it seems very clear that there needs to be at some point some element of measurability if anyone's going to enter this social marketing space. No. No, right? no I agree. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot which, it's clearly if you have a choice between doing two things, one which is measurable and you tend to have similar events, similar results, and one which is not measurable, there's a lot of value in the measurable because then you can then refine in so many ways. But there is a massive amount which you can do, which results in tangible uh, you know, outcomes, which is not necessarily measurable. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing that. So the same thing about advertising. I mean, advertising is largely unmeasurable. Does it mean you should not advertise? No. So, and the same thing with social media. If you are only doing those things that are measurable, I'd say that's a major mistake, which, which you did say before. And so, and I think that there is a, um, you, it doesn't, you know, there's, there's value being measured, but there's a lot which you can do which, uh, and you can't necessarily make the link. This is the activity and the results in the sale. If you can do that, track through, there's a click, the results in the sale, this is what I did to generate that, fantastic. But that doesn't mean that there's lots of other things you can't do which will result in sales and you can't actually track that path. So I think it is a mistake to be only doing measurable things. What about this, that old saying, I know that half my advertising works, I just don't know which half. What if you could find out which half worked and which half didn't work? And then applied that through the other mechanisms that you might not be able to measure that tangible result? You never could. It's impossible. <laughs> it will become more and more impossible. The further we, we go into this, the harder it gets. Sure, you might, if you only did the measurable things, you'd miss out the big opportunities that come to playing a hunch. I'm going to jump ahead because we're, we're moving out of time and there's some people quick, quick, quick comment, and I don't like it. No, just quick comment on that. Uh, I, I agree, there are, there are some things that aren't measurable, but that's because you shouldn't tie them to the measurable things. It's like, um, should you care about the environment? Should you care about your community and customers? You don't want to give a, you know, are, are your customers happy? You know, measuring customer satisfaction should be about whether they're buying your product and loving you. It shouldn't be a, a score on a piece of paper. Um, I think, though, there are... There, a lot of times it comes down to the wrong people who are asking the question, especially around social media and communities. 
It should be the marketing people doing it for promotion. It should be the customer support people doing it to engage and to answer those questions. It could be, can be just the wrong people asking. There's other types of businesses, and especially small businesses, where it's actually better to be just measurable. Uh, I've, I worked with a company, uh, very successful in generating revenue, and we were trying to build a, a campaign to increase customer engagement. And we actually decided to ditch customer engagement completely. We completely ditched it. You can't even join this website. It's just a turnstile. We just made the turnstile tick faster and faster and faster, and people would come back on the other side because we did a good job. We just removed all the friction and made it beautifully measurable. We took out all that friction, uh, which, which just made the whole process conversion much more valuable. So there were right times, but don't, you know, don't follow any rules, just ask the question about what makes sense. Google changes their algorithm nearly twice a day. So, and they do it because everyone's trying to beat them at their own game. But I got a fair, fairly good bet that they're um, smarter than the average person trying to beat them, and they've got more money behind them. Um, the best thing you can do by far is what a lot of guys have talked about, create good content, create, be engaging, keep doing it day in, day out, day out. Don't make it a campaign, make it a part of what your company is. Um, when we talk about findability, uh, we do two things. We think about on-ramps and off-ramps. Both are important. So, who, who has your customer before you? If it's Google, because somebody is looking for what you've got, great. If it's a partner, then go partner with them. That might be the best way for you to be to be found is through a partner program. Uh, so you know, don't, I don't just think just automatically assume that SEO is the only way to go. It's getting more and more expensive, um, and you know I think distribution partnerships and affiliate programs can be a, a great alternative. Commission Monster, you should be looking at. You should be doing trials trials of that. SEO is always going to be a black art because Google's going to be uh, four or five steps ahead. But again, best thing to do is just create, create real content and keep doing it every day. I'd also add, of course, when you talk about being findable, it also depends on who it is that you're looking for that you want to come to you. For instance, we probably get 40% of our traffic from Twitter, broadly. So 40% of our traffic from Google, about 15% of our traffic from Twitter. But I would say that the people who come in from Twitter tend to have been sent there by people who've retweeted one of our links, they tend to be the people who are interested in what we write about. The fact that they're taking part in something like that means they're more likely to come and comment and stay and look at a few other things. So so I would say somebody who comes to me through a link that's been tweeted is probably worth a lot more to me than someone who's just dropped by and they're going to disappear again from, who's dropped in from Google News. We uh, have a similar experience where 7% of our traffic comes from Twitter and we'll find that those people will hang around, do more stuff, and it's simply because someone else has referred them, which is the effect of social media. When you're talking to your clients, Heather, uh, I mean, like, are they interested in search engine optimization or, or is it just simply buying AdWords? Or how do they look at the world? Um, I was really lucky when I worked at a digital agency because we had a media team who handled all of that. So I got to let them do SEO stuff, but personally, I, my background before I came back to Australia from the States was I was an editorial director for a bunch of different blogs. Um, one guy who started a shop called Undercurrent, which is a very successful brand strategy um, shop in New York. And the amount of content that you get online from bloggers who tag their content right and um, and get their stuff across a bunch of different networks like YouTube, like Flickr, doubling up on all of their content, making sure that it's findable through all of them, will actually raise you up in, in your Google rankings as well. So I mean, it's just it's just smartly posting your content online and using something like a WordPress or a Blogspot, which is owned by Google. Um, that you. Not him. You want to say something? So, I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> a, a point you made last time I interviewed you, James, was you gave the example about creating really good content that can be found in terms of, I think it was the, the solar panel manufacturer was the, the one that you used. You're stealing my hypothetical for ending tonight. <laughs> we should have planned this, shouldn't we? Yeah, that was doing you a favour. 